Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and in this video we're going to discuss using Boolean tools, some note editing, and merging text into our designs. So hang around, this is going to be a good one. Okay, so in the last video that I uploaded into Laser Maker's Realm, I gave away a door decoration file that created this image here. And I also showed in that video where I had modified it even more so, incorporating the names into the hearts. And a few of you have asked, well, how did you get the names in there? And then also, just wanting to see my basic design concept and how I go about creating the uh, the door trims. So we're gonna try and address all of that as quickly as possible. We're not gonna go into any elaborate designing work, but just the techniques themselves. Let's jump into Lightburn. All right, so this is the basic artwork for that truck. First, how to create these interlocking hearts. Just like layers and your cut layers, priority is everything in Lightburn. The order in which you do things can make all the difference in success or failure. Whether or not you uh, duplicate, cut, paste, uh, or you want to use the Boolean tools, or you're adding, subtracting parts, the order in which you click or select them and in this case, the order in which you do your design techniques will make a difference in your outcome, whether it works or not. But the first and most important thing is when you're going to design a project like this, you need to make sure that you're designing at the correct scale. Because if you bring a heart into your design work, onto your work table. Where's my heart? There we go. Heart. I bring a basic heart in here and I start designing from this scale. And I don't do it by physical measurements, but just what looks good. Or even if I do it by physical measurements, if I start designing this heart and I'm wanting to give it uh, a quarter inch or just under a quarter inch offset, I select my offset, tell it a quarter inch. Well, you know, we'll go, just for, for this demonstration, we're going to do exactly a quarter inch. We did a qu quarter inch inward corner offset. So if we look at this heart and we look at our ruler and we're in inches and we look at the distance from here to here, you can see up there in the segment length, that's 0.25. That's a quarter inch offset. That's what we told it to do. But then once you you do all your duplications, create all your hearts, and now you realize, okay, well, that's just too big. Because by the time you uh, put four of these together and w with one of these, uh, that's five, that's a five, six inch heart height. And if you do four or five of those at six inches, now you're 30 inches, that's way too big. Well, you've done all your design work and now you scale it down. If you scale it down to the size you need it to be, and then now you go back and look at your offset. That offset now measures only 0.12. It's an eighth of an inch. So you've just cut down your offset by half of what you wanted it to be. So priority matters. So when you're doing designs like this, you need to do it, start your, from the origin, your origin of your design, your, your initial starting point needs to be at scale okay so in this case i'm going to start with uh about a three inch heart so i'm going to set my height to three inches up oh, i didn't have my aspect ratio locked told you i'm gonna mess up so lock your aspect ratio i'm going to change my height to a three inch heart height and now i'm going to select my offset tool and i'm going to give it that quarter inch uh inward offset and now if you haven't used offset, 
It's right there in the middle of your left-hand menu bar. But you have different options in offset. You can do an outward offset, inward offset, or both. You can do, and I'm doing an inward, and you can do, and if you look here, if I'm going to zoom in, see how the heart in the middle comes to a point and the bottom of the horse comes to a point. But you can change it to a round offset or a beveled offset. But of course, we're doing a heart, and in this case, I want to keep it to a point. Where this could be uh, a factor is if you're doing something at a design and the point is going to make something too fragile, you might give it a round offset. But we're going to stay with corners. And okay, there were more options over there which we're not going to go into right now because we're going to we don't want this thing to get derailed. All right, so we have a three-inch heart overall with a quarter-inch inward offset. Now I'm going to come over here to my offset tool and I'm going to weld, not my offset, my Boolean tools in my left menu. Don't you? I'm going to mess up all throughout this video. And people who jump around, they're going to miss out on my corrections. <laughs> um, so go to your Boolean tools, which are over on your left corner or your left side menu. And your first option there is weld all selected shapes together. And do that now if you click just that outward it doesn't matter that is one design now with that being the case select it and we're gonna hit control D and we're gonna do this how many how many hearts were down I had four hearts coming down there so we're gonna do this we're gonna duplicate it three times control D one two three now we have four hearts right there and I'm gonna bring them down and I'm going to stagger these out and we're going to change the size is that did I not do it one two three four okay that's right one two three four one two three four okay I'm still on cough medicine people uh, um, uh, my brain is in a fog all right so now what we need to do is arrange them in a way that I want to show them interlocking and, and varying the sizes and then align everything so that if you look right here as it comes down the side of this design everything is aligned so that when those hearts rest against the door jam it's going to be a 90 degree angle here and then across the top so how do we do that too all right I'm going to do all that in one step here in just a second all right first thing I want to do is there's a fifth heart that's actually in the bed of the truck which we're going to put in the truck later and we're not going to worry about right now this is just doing that right down the side door trim and let's do a, sh a slightly smaller one here and I didn't hold my control button told you I'm gonna mess up hold your control and shrink that down and You know what? I, in this case, I'm going to duplicate that one. Control D. Control D. And I'm going to put a, a fifth one in here on this design. We're going to do this a little bit different. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this heart a little bit. And I'm going to rotate this heart a little bit. Bring it up here where she's interlocked. And right now, I'm just getting a rough idea of what's going to look good. And if you notice now, now that I've started moving these and shrinking these around, these smaller ones are no longer got that quarter inch offset, which is fine. Uh, because I'm not going to be doing much with these small ones except using them to interlock everything. And I think I want to do that. something like that we're, we'll get there 
All right, now, how do we get everything aligned? Well, you see I've got a little frame that comes down through there that's gonna rest on the door trim. But right now, I'm just gonna create a tool path. So I, I create my rectangle, select my tool path, and I'm just gonna draw me a rectangle down through here. And I'm gonna set my dimensions. Uh, the width, I'm gonna tell it to be a quarter inch and a 10 inch. And I still have everything locked. So unlock your aspect ratio quarter inch and 10 inches there we go now with that tool path I need to put it to where it's going to be in the center position of all those hearts and that heart got changed to a tool path didn't want it to Just put her back now I'm going to select this heart and I'm going to use my docking tools and tell it to dock right up against that toolpath. So dock, done. Now, this one is not going to dock against the toolpath because it's going to hit, if it's going to move at all, it's going to hit this heart before it hits the toolpath most likely. Try to tell it to dock. Yeah, no, I say it's not going to work because it's already recognizing that it's inside that toolpath. And that's that's fine because we don't need them all touching that and what you can do <clears throat> excuse me put this one on a different path we're gonna put it uh, doesn't really matter we're gonna put it on a black path for right now and we're gonna tell it not to show and now select this heart and tell it to dock and now it's gonna dock to that tool path let's put this one on the black path and okay now all those are docked right up against that tool path and they're in perfect perfect alignment so that when they're sitting against the door frame it'll keep everything nice and square now I'm gonna turn that one back on and now I can position my interlocking ones where I want them to be And on these larger hearts, as long as I just move them up and down, it's not going to affect my alignment. If I start rotating them, it's going to be an issue. But that'll work. And... I think that'll work. Thing. Actually, I, I want to bring that up a little bit. I don't. We'll see. Uh, this is trying to do this as fast as I can for you guys, folks. So probably going to be some goofs here and there. But now that I've got them all on the correct position and alignment, I'm going to put them all on my cut path. And now, if you were to simply take, select all of these wrong boy there we go select all these and use your weld function your boolean tool over here you've welded all those together they are interlocking but if you can you see the difference between these and the one in the design here and not just the difference in width and position but you notice how these actually have the illusion of being interlocked and overlapping one another these do not because these were welded together and all of the intersecting lines were removed and on these I actually went back in and put an engraved line alternating on the heart positions to give you the illusion of it being truly interlocking so if you don't care about it being that fancy and from halfway across the room you're not going to see those lines it's just when you're up and close and personal that you're going to see them. So if you're not worried about looking good from across the room, then this is going to be all you need to do. But if you want to add those fine details to it, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some node editing tricks. So I'm going to go back and unweld all this. And now, starting at my top, and this is grouped together, I'm going to need to ungroup it. 
<clears throat> and so I've got individual heart, individual heart, and now I need to ungroup this one as well. Now all four of those are individual pieces. So now I want this lower heart to be on top of the upper heart here and under it here. So if this is gonna be on top, then this line from your upper heart, that one will be gone. This one will be gone, and these two will be in grave lines. So how do we do that? Well, if you select that one and go into node editing, if you move your mouse, once you're on the line, you see you get that horizontal line. But when you come to a point where they intersect, you'll get a set of crosshairs. Now at that point, you're gonna hit the letter I for insert and immediately follow it with the letter B for break. So I, B. So with a crosshairs, I'm hitting the letter I and then the letter B. And then I'm gonna come down here to my next intersection. I got my crosshairs there and hit the letter I and the letter B. Now, when I click on just this piece, it's broken apart exactly where they intersected. Now I'm gonna tell that to go to my engrave layer. I'm gonna repeat that up here. Find my crosshairs, I, B. Come down here, I, B. Select it and engrave. Now this one, these pair, I need to delete this line and this line. So now this is an easier one. Once you get there and get your one horizontal cursor that shows you're on that line, just hit the letter T for trim. Gone. Come down here, select it, get your line, T for trim, it's gone. Now we're gonna repeat that down here, but we're gonna inverse which one goes on top, which one goes on bottom. So this line, since it's underneath here, we want this line on top. So this line, I can just hit the letter T, hit the, select this one, hit the letter T, come here, look for my crosshairs, IB, select it again, hit IB, and now select it and tell that to be an engrave. Select our lower one, hit the, get our crosshairs, hit IB, and you notice how all the nodes disappeared? It does that, and then when you do, all you do is you get your crosshairs and click on your mouse, select that line again. Now hit I, B, and come here, and we need to make that an engrave. And now if we look at that, you have an interlocking pair of hearts. And now you're gonna repeat that process all the way down. And it's really not difficult, it's really quick, really easy. And like I said, this is just details. And details to me is what makes my products worth that extra dollar compared to the guy who just knocked it out five minutes quick and doesn't give a flip about the details. Details add value to your product, in my opinion. All right. So I'm gonna fast forward through this as I do these really quick edits. There we have one, two, three, four, five interlocking hearts. I told you in the beginning, priority matters. So I did this in a, a order that's gonna make things extremely difficult for the next process to work. You can make it work, it's a whole lot more difficult. And that's why I wanna show you 
why priorities matter. So now if I want to come in here and add a name inside this heart, do something like this design here. This has to be a closed path. And if you see there, because of all the breaks that I've done and changes and editing and changing these from cuts to engraving and breaking everything up, this inner path that starts here, goes all the way around, comes up and over here. So it's, that's one section, two sections, three sections. Three different sections of that path that have to be joined before you can edit and add any kind of text in here. Because right now, if we come in here to test, or text, and we're gonna put in test text, and let's use a different doesn't really matter because what I'm going to show you here is not going to work. But if we come in here and there's a couple problems. See, the text is not connected. Those are individual letters. So you can't add that in and of itself to the heart. And even if we do something as simple as create an offset around them, do an outward offset, and... Now, those, that offset is all connected, and if we select just the offset and tell it we want to weld it to the inside of that heart, we can't because it's not a complete or a closed path. So, had we done our text first, then edited our overlapping lines, we would have eliminated all of this headache. So priorities matter. Order matters. Otherwise you get chaos. Order is important. Now, if you're at this point and you're like, oh man, I screwed up. Do you have to go back and undo all that? No, you don't. But it's a little trickier. You have to make sure you select all of the pieces that are on the path that you need to close. Select all of those tools or edit rather auto join selected shapes shortcut alt j auto join selected shapes now does that give us one a whole piece yes it does at least it looks like it did now the way you can tell is now look and see if you have a closed path so by clicking that go to edit Closed path is no longer highlighted. So now that is a closed path. So now you can take that offset that you created, bring it in here, put it in a position where she's overlapping, hold your shift key, select that, and now we're going to use our Boolean tools. We've been using Boolean tools, but now we're going to use the Boolean Assistant because I don't know which one of these over here is the right one I want to use. So if you come up to Tools, come down to Boolean Assistant or Control B, it's going to open up another menu here for you to see all these different options that are down the side of your left menu bar. And nothing is permanent until you tell it OK. So here you can see if we do a union, that's not what we want. An intersection is not what we want. And the subtract a, A subtract B is not what we want, but there, that looks right. So B subtract A, and tell it OK. And now, if you were to take your test and bring it over here, you can center that right up over there, and now you've got that merged into your hearts. Now, I go a little step further, and I like that little piece that's right there. I don't like it, so I'll ungroup the and go ahead and just highlight it and delete it and put this back on our cut path and this one back on our cut path 
and this one back on our cut path. Now here you could either cut out the word or the letters test or you could do an engraving there and have that name in there. So it's not impossible to do your text after you've done all of those line edits. It's just a little bit more work. You have to join everything together and let's see if I can find an instance where you think you've joined it all but you haven't and how you can tell. So there's one I need to join there, there. That looks like everything. So now I'm going to do Alt J for auto join. Now, is that a closed path? You go to edit and now see, it's telling you to close path. That one's still highlighted. It looks like everything is selected. If we zoom in here, it looks like, come on. Oh, let's see. No, it did not. Now I selected that a second ago. If, I, if we look, comes all the way around. We get to this arch, hold our shift key and select it again. Tell it to Alt J for auto join. And did that select it? Did that join everything? No, it didn't. It's still separated. So that means there's something very, very small in here that's a problem. Right there it is. If you zoom in tight, see how that black line goes to here? It doesn't go to the intersection. All right, so how do you do that? <clears throat> Once you find your issue, you go back to your node edits. Drag that out and connect it. And you can see the ant started crawling. That's how you know you got it con uh, connected. Now this one is just an engrave and we're going to bring it right back up there as well. So now, when you click on this piece, that's a solid piece, and now you can weld text in there. Let's look at the lower one. Looks like there's just two pieces here, so hold my shift key and that. Hit Alt J. And that worked. And the reason I know that worked, I'm going to hit my undo button. You see that's individual. And then we select this one up here. Shift. I want you to pay attention to the, the Vegas lights, the ants, the direction in which they're crawling. And I'm going to zoom in here tight so you can see. Right now everything's crawling in a clockwise rotation. I'm going to hit Alt-J. Pay attention. Watch those crawling ants. Alt-J. See everything just switched and started going counterclockwise? That's how I know that that auto join was effective. And if I just unselect it all and select one position, you see the whole thing is now selected. So now you're going to add text to that. Another thing you look at on your text, if you decided that you were going to try and just do what I did here, and this one was kind of a foobar, because Leanne's name is extremely long. In fact, did you notice that? That's not attached. And that's bad because that's not going to last a day or two. That's why this is still here and it's not in the possession of Dean and Leanne. That font and her name made everything so small and dainty that by the time it was stretched to its position in the heart, Every, those lines were just not going to work. So that's too small. And here, you see that T is not connected to the S. So you have to zoom in really close to your text and look and pay attention to what you're doing because text is n not recognized as individual shapes. And so when you click on one point in that text, you're getting the whole thing thinking you've got all of them when in fact you do not. You've got the whole word, but you don't have each individual node there. 
So when you weld those together, it's not going to work. You can do, you can correct that a couple different ways, but I'm not going to get into text editing here. But if you wanted to use this font, you wanted that, the easiest solution for it is to do an offset. And it can be small, even smaller than that. Let's, ah. Move your text out of the way. And then weld your offset in place. Grab both of them and go to my tools. Now you see you have the option for Boolean Assistant. And now you can look and see which one do you want. Do you want union? No, you don't want that one. You don't want intersection. You want to subtract, but you don't want to subtract B from A. You want to subtract A from B. There we go. So now you can use that fancier, finer text. So that's how you put the text in there but it's better to do the text first use your boolean tools to add it to the object and in fact just show you how quick and easy that is we take a basic heart what's going there we go come on why am i there uh basic art add it to my graphic and had i done this initially do your offset and we used a quarter inch offset inward corner done now you want to put in your name do an outward offset That's not the one I want. And you got all those pieces of offset too now you got to deal with. You can't change the size of that offset. Because <clears throat> it's offset for the word you just did. So you'd size your word in there first. But now I'm going to ungroup all of that. Select all these inner pieces. Delete those. Oh, didn't mean to move that. Hit your undo button. Boolean assistant. Find the subtract that we want. That time it is subtract B from A. Okay. Bring in your text. And that's easy enough to do. And then <clears throat> take and start manipulating all those cut paths and overlaps. It's a whole lot easier to do your text first. Now let's design the top half. So this is complete and sort of for right now. So we'll set it out of the way and I'm gonna grab all the truck and make sure she's grouped together and then move her out of the way for right now. And I have that truck artwork in my library. I'm gonna add it to my project. No, I don't wanna do that. Hit the wrong button, stupid. Add graphic to project. Need to orient it correctly. Bring her down to size. And go get me a heart. Oh, I could have brought the heart in while I was there. Add to project. <clears throat> Guys, I'm sorry for all the throat clearing and hacking, but I am still under the weather. Ugh. <sighs> All right, so now with that heart, that's actually a pretty decent position there. But I need to do a lot of things to this heart. I need to, <clears throat> I need to create an offset, and then I need to put it in the bed of the truck. And to put it in the bed of the truck, it needs to go behind this quarter panel, and it needs to be behind these stakes of the stake bed. If I was going to do any words, I'd do that in 
right after creating my offset. So I'm going to do offset inward quarter inch. And then I would, if I, like I said, if I was going to do any text, I would do it now, but I'm not. But I'm going to use the same editing techniques that I did a minute ago to put this behind the stake bed. So the stake bed, of course, needs to be seen. We're going to ungroup all of the stake bed, the whole truck, whatever. Go into node editing. Look for our crosshairs. Remember it's insert, I, and then B. Look for your crosshairs, I, and B. Now click on that piece and put it on the engraved layer. Select again, look for our crosshairs, I, B. Crosshairs, I, B. Select and put on our engraved layer. These two pieces need to go bye-bye. So select, hover over it, and hit the letter T for trim. Now T for trim is going to trim away all of the pieces between the next two intersecting points. So I didn't explain that earlier, but that's what T does. It's going to here it intersects and here it intersects. So if you're just anywhere over here, it doesn't matter where, you just hit that T and it's going to get rid of all. Oh, now see, that made a liar out of me. It got rid of all that up there. So let's do undo. It's not recognizing that as an intersect point, and it will do that sometimes, but that's easy enough. All you got to do is come over here, give your crosshairs, I, and now what happens if you hit just T? Still, same thing. So we're going to do the B. Hover over that, now hit B. Break. And go ahead and just for safe measure, do IB here too. IB. Now we can get rid of that by hitting the D button. We'll get rid of both of those there. All right. So now see that is behind that stake bed. We'll do the same thing down here. Let's see if T will work this time. T. That worked. Will it work over here this time? T. Worked that time and here again T and T okay that looks oh now I need to make these engraved lines so insert and break IB and select it again crosshairs IB and select just that put it on an engraved line Let's do this again. IB. And IB. And engrave. Now, let's see what she's looking like. <clears throat> this needs to be engrave. IB. Crosshairs IB. Oh, we got to put it in node editing. Now IB. And again. And engrave. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't break that one. Let's try it again. IB. And engrave. Actually, I don't need to change those to engrave because that's going to be an engrave with a line after pass anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave them be for now. I'm not going to go back and undo those. This I need to get rid of. Let's try node editing. The letter T. And see, yep, and one more down here, T, and that looks right there. All right, so on second thought, the stake bed is going to be in a fill mode 
with a line after fill. So putting these in an, an engraved line mode right there was not necessary. I did not need to do that. I did need to eliminate those overlapping lines where the heart was in front of it, but I didn't need to change that. I'm not going to worry about that in this because we're, this is going to be a long video. We're going to move on. But you see how I just put that in the stake bed. I just put that in the bed of the truck. Now, I need to put it on a ledge and uh, with some slots and tabs. I need something for this to set on. So I'm going to do another toolpath for right now. Put it on T2 and I'm going to make it a quarter inch tall and 10 inches long. I'm going to hold my shift key, select the body of the truck there, and tell it to go to center. Mm, nope, because that wasn't the whole body. Let's group all this, grab our toolbar, now center. Still don't look right. I guess it is. The truck's just longer than the, the, the 10 inches there. But that's fine. It's underneath the tires. <clears throat> and now I can select that toolbar and dock it to the tires. There. Now she's aligned on a nice even plane. Um, <laughs> All right. I'm going to bring this over into play for right now and see what I've got to do to get those to line up with this design. First thing I'm going to do is select that and go ahead and drag it over here further. Now I'm going to bring this. Um, I'm, and remember the blue. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of this toolpath. Delete. Undo, put you back. There we go. Put this to where it's going to be overlapping. Now I'll need to do the same thing to those hearts that I've done to the other hearts. Figure out which one goes where. Let's put this one on top. So this one will go on the bottom. I'll group all of them. All right, so edit. So if this, if the heart that's in the bed of the truck is gonna be on top, what do I need to do with those two lines? Somebody in the back of the room, tell me. I'm sorry, speak, speak up. That's right. They need to be on top of this one. So this one needs to be an engraved. Correct. All right. So what I need to do is what? Crosshairs. I and B. Somebody's been listening. All right. Select it again. Crosshairs. I and B. Select it and put that on the engraved line. Do it again. And then what do we need to do with the other two lines here? Right, delete them. And we can do that by, most of the time by doing what? T for trim. All right, T. And select this one and T. So that one worked. Let's see if we get so lucky down here. All right, so now this one's on top. So down here it's going to go underneath the one already out of the truck. So these will be on top. So we're going to... Since it's already selected, we're just going to do IB, IB, select it again, IB, put this on an engraved layer, come here, crosshairs, IB, select it again, IB. It's a lot of repetition here. 
black layer. Select this one and T for trim. And select again, T for trim. All right, so that quick, those are interlocked. Okay, that's looking good. Now, because I took the trouble of creating a toolpath earlier and aligning the three largest hearts coming down the side here onto that toolpath, you do not need an additional piece like I put over here. You don't need it uh, because those are perfectly perpendicular, perfectly perpendicular. Um, and so they're going to sit right against the edge of the door frame. But you do need something up here. I, you, you don't. You could do just a simple cut out there and just set the whole thing right up there and, and be done with it. Uh, I like putting a little bit of a, a footprint on it. Uh, so you, and also if you needed to put a little tape or something on there because if you've got a household where doors are getting closed harder than others or the windows are open windy, I just don't trust it sitting there. So I'm going to put a platform on the bottom or the top of it here. And with where that's positioned right now, I believe we'll be all right. And I actually, I'm going to now first select that, put it on a cut path. And I need it right now. It's docked right up against the tires. But if we were to marry those or weld those, it's not going to do a real good job. So I'm going to hold my shift button and arrow up and that gave me a little bit better overlap in the rear back here but still not quite so much on the front one I'm gonna hold my control button and arrow up and that's still too there there we go that's better now I'm gonna select my tires and weld that stuff together done <clears throat> now I need that there is the piece that that could be cut out as is as well but I like I want to put tabs and a footprint on it so I'm going to create another rectangle this time I'm going to do let's do a half inch and 10 inches long so unlock our height is going to be half inch and 10 inches now here you need to know what what thickness material material you're going to be working with. I'm going to see if I can align that to there we go to the left side of the truck. And if you're not absolutely sure that that's lined up, if you select just the corner of of that, you drag her up. And this is absolutely crucial that you align these because we're getting ready to make our slots and tabs. So with those two corners lined up perfectly for each other, now I'm going to create some tabs. I did this a half inch thick because I'm using uh, 4.6 millimeter material thickness. So let's put this in metric and now I'm going to create some rectangles and they need to be 4.6 millimeters and height wise the half an inch uh, what is that in metric that is uh, 12.7 so half that 6.35 uh, so we'll just just say five millimeters uh, no not 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 width we got our, our width our height is 4.6 that's got to stay the same that's gonna work golf syrup was kicking in baby all right now how many tabs do you go across here that's up to you nobody's gonna see these it's just a matter of giving some rigidity to them I'm gonna do three I'm gonna do one I couldn't control D there's two control D it's three now I'm gonna move one here move another one down here there's three of them now what I'm going to do <clears throat> is position these in pieces about where I want them to be. So 
select all of them. I'm going to center them on their horizontal centers. Now I'm going to distribute them equally. There we go. And that was this button up here in the top menu. Distribute selected objects horizontally with even space between them. So now those are spaced evenly between the three. Now I can select all three of those and weld those together, or group them rather, group. Now select the rectangle and tell them to go to their center, its center rather. <coughs> now those three slots are centered exactly in that piece that is going to be the base for that truck to set on. Now with doing that, they're, they're spaced evenly, they're positioned exactly where I need them to, Select them and control D. Control D. Now holding the shift key, select the rectangle where the base of is in and then hit group. And now arrow them down and out of the way. Now that is finished. That is the base that's going to be sitting on the top of the door frame, the casing. Now these three pieces, they're grouped together and we're going to dock them straight up. Now with those docked to the bottom of that, I can just grab those like that and see if we can't hit our Boolean union. And there are your tabs. It's that easy, folks. That's how you create and align perfect position for your tabs and your slots. So now when that cuts out, that's going to fit right in there perfectly. The, the height of those is the thickness of the material. And it can't get any simpler than that. So I'm going to call this a stopping point. This is not a completed design because this is not ready to cut out. Uh, right now, the, 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 I don't have the layer set up with the designs that I'd want to use. Plus, if you were to try and cut this out right now, this piece is a standalone piece, and that's going to cut out just your base and two tires, and the rest of it's going to fall apart. Unlike this file, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye, delete. This file is available to you for free on the Laser Makers Realm. And this has got the layers set up the way I'd want. It does have the offsets correct so that when you cut it out it's not going to all fall apart uh it's got a nice line interval here on the stake bed that's going to give you a neat wood grain effect for your wood stake bed all of that is explained on the laser makers realm go to youtube.com at the laser makers realm and you'll find this file in a video that's completely free for you to download and create your own now you have seen the techniques on how to add text and I have already corrected all of the problems I think with the ability to add text to these as is really simply you're not not going to have those headaches you should be able to just take that and add the text create an offset weld the offset in and, and be done it should be simple to do at this point I hope if you have problems let me know but this is free at youtube.com at the laser makers realm if you haven't seen that channel get over there subscribe there's nothing but free projects there for you to download and it's going to be a, a, a plethora of of projects and a huge assortment of what they are and what what they're going to be designed for both diodes co2s uh fibers you name it so it's going to be a lot of stuff there a good channel to, to subscribe to subscribe and, uh, and be sure to hit the notifications so you don't miss out on any projects. I was going to do this video live, but I decided against doing a, a live stream on this type of creation because I was concerned that even with a moderator that I could get derailed with questions that would take me off of a tangent that would keep me from getting to this point this soon. And this wasn't very quick. So uh, if you found this informative, if you enjoyed it, you learned something, you drop a comment down below, let me know that yes, you appreciate it, you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions about what the, was talked about, the content in this video, 
This is the first time I'm going to do this. Hobo with wood at gmail.com. Hobo with wood at gmail.com. You send me an email with the subject line being Q&A heart truck. Nothing else. Q&A heart truck. And then I'll know that you have questions regarding this video and I will do my best to address those questions and answer every email. However, with that said, if your question is re pertaining to something that's in this video and you just didn't see it, I'm going to reply, go back and watch the video. But if you say, hey, yes, it's in the video, you talked about it, I seen it, but I still didn't get it, I didn't quite follow it, and it could either be because just the way I tried to explain it, it could have been a result of the medicine, or I will do my best to help you understand what I've already tried to convey. But if you ask a question that's in the video, and then you've also commented, man, you like to talk too much. And then you expect me to go back and find out why the answers you missed are in the video because you were hopping around, skipping around. I ain't going to do it. I just ain't, ain't going to do it. <laughs> I was like, go watch the video. Guys, I thank you for watching. And if you do take any value from these, I also do have my Patreon account established now. And surprisingly enough I have some patrons I am floored and I'm ever so thankful for my patrons if you find these informative if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more of them go over to patreon and sign up help me out help me keep these going I need your support in order to be able to continue to get materials to create the projects in order to design stuff create and then turn around and give them to you for free on laser makers realm so your support would be greatly appreciated especially if you start downloading my files on LMR and you start creating them and selling them and getting really rich <laughs> spread the love <laughs> so until the next video I'm Steve hobo with wood and I'm out